Thank you for joining me today on my podcast. I hope you have a blessed day. I heard someone say, I'm no longer under the law, which includes the Ten Commandments. And they said, I can do pretty much what I want to do. Now, I know they said it in ignorance of the scriptures. They didn't know the scriptures. Don't know what the Bible says. So I took time and I shared the scriptures with them. So I'm just going to briefly go over what I talked about with them. And I will be right back. Okay, welcome back. That person was uh, somewhat right. We're not under the law, but are we still under the Ten Commandments? If, say we had no commandments. First of all, let me lay the foundation. Uh, let me go to Galatians. Okay. Go to Galatians 3, 22. And see what the scriptures actually say about it. But the scriptures has confined all under sin. Now Paul is talking to Jews primarily and Christians. All under sin that the promise by faith and Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law. Kept for faith which would afterwards be. Be revealed. In G- talking about when Christ came to die for our sins. Let me go to verse 24. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. That we might be justified by faith. You follow me? Before faith, before faith came, before Christ came, the law was. And the law was only applied to Israel. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Yes, he is correct in that aspect. We're no longer under a tutor. We have faith in Christ Jesus. We live for him. Now, the law was more than just Ten Commandments. It was over 600 articles of uh, rules and laws that they had to live by. That's why Jesus told them, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. Now, let me move on. Let me de- look at the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. 410. Then Jesus said to him, talking to Satan, this is when Jesus was led into the wilderness after being baptized by John. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only. No, no one else. That's it. No other gods. That's in the New Testament. The next one. Thou shalt not make any graven images. I think the uh, New Teaching James says carved images. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, 10. 
Now, these things became our example. Talk about the Old Testament. Talk about the Old Covenant. The law. They became our example to the intent, the very purpose that we not should not lust after evil things as they also lusted and did and do not become idolaters as some as were some of them as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play What's wrong with that? They did it without God. They did it without putting God first. Anything you put before God is idolatry. You can't put nothing before God. They live their daily lives without God. And he referred to that as idolatry. Because you put in life before him. Everything goes before him. That is Counted as idolatry. Okay, let's go to the next one. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thou God in vain. Oh, you should not, it says, New Key James, you should not use his name in vain. Now, it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 1, we then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Okay. I remember hearing someone say, you can do this and mention me. Was telling me about uh, it was uh, some kind of program we was doing. He said, "Mention me, and they help out. I have a good name with them." So we did, and it worked out fine. But the 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 very purpose was uh, his. We use his name. And we couldn't use that name deceitfully in pretense. In the Old Testament, when they received, when they said they're going to live for God, when Israel was going to live for God and obey his rules, they received his name. They are receiving his name. That is what we do when we become Christians. We receive his grace. And we don't do it just because everybody else is doing it. We receive that name because we intend in our heart to live for him, not in vain, not to do it for any kind of personal gain. God looks down on that and he won't forget it. You're dead to deceive somebody. I met a lot of guys who um, came to church and the elders had to deal with him because they came to church Pretending they are a Christian, say, oh, I, I am a Christian. I love the Lord Jesus. That's what they said. Then they were there to pick up girls. They said it to people who they thought wasn't playing, who, who they thought were playing. And they, had, they said I, had, I was convicted enough. I had to tell you, tell you this. These guys ain't right. They are receiving that name in vain. No good. Not living for him. Even now, I know that, and rightly so, we apply that to whenever people use profanity. They are. Because the name of the Lord is, per is precious. We shouldn't do that. It against his very heart that we would just profound his name. So taking his name in vain is very much a part of the New Testament. Well, as the other ones. Now this next one. 
It's the most hotly contested uh, verse in the Bible. One of the most hotly contested ones. Uh, but I'm not here to debate the Sabbath. There are hundreds of people for and against. They're on the internet. They're everywhere you look. There's a whole denomination called the Seventh Day Baptist and the Seventh Day Adventist <clears throat> who will try to put up our, our argument <clears throat> for keeping the Sabbath. <clears throat> I debated with them. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure they debated with some of the best out there. So that's not my purpose. So ain't nothing new about that. <clears throat> But this is the one I share with him. That's how I keep the Sabbath day holy. <clears throat> now, everyone know I predict this particular scripture. Well, the Lord sh showed it to me. Because now everyone knows about it was called a day of rest. True. It was called a day of rest. And they said, well, you know. It was established. It's not a part of the law. It was established in Genesis 2 and 2. Uh, they partly write. It was established in Genesis 2 and 2. But Jesus, but, I mean, excuse me, the Lord God, that's his day of rest. No way in Scripture, nowhere in Scripture, can you find nowhere in Scripture in the Old Testament can you find God commanding Adam to honor the Sabbath? After Genesis 2 and 2, between Genesis and Mount Sinai, you don't find anyone, anyone, you don't find anyone Practice Sabbath keeping until you get to Mount Sinai when Moses received the law. That is where we come to the Sabbath. And God commanded Israel. The law was given to Israel, not to us, not to Gentiles. Gentiles was grafted into the, into the vine and to Israel. Since we were grafted into Israel, the church was, which is Gentiles, then we, and Israel is no longer under the law, then we are not in the law because, under the law because we were grafted in. We were never under the law. But as I was saying, the Sabbath day was, was it only for a day of rest. Let me go to Deuteronomy 15. As I said, it was a day of rest, but also, and remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God command you to keep the Sabbath. We were never slaves in Egypt. Never were we ever slaves in Egypt. And this is not a metaphor of America. It is an example. Sometimes Egypt is used as example of sin or the world. <clears throat> We're going to be free one day from this world. <clears throat> In Hebrews 4, I'm not going to show it, Hebrews 4, it talks about there remains a day of rest. Talking about when we leave this world and be with him. But that's not yet. 
Let me go back to the Sabbath. <laughs> I'm going to Colossians 2. So let no one judge you in food or in drinks or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths. Now, King James, New King James, other verses translated the word, that word plural. They said, and some opponents say that's a festival, but it mentioned festivals already in the first beginning of the verse. Other uh, translations, reliable translations, translated plural. Most scholars, New Testament Greek scholars, Old Testament Hebrew scholars, most of them would agree that this verse is talking about the weekly Sabbath, that day of rest. Dr. James uh, White, he's a New Testament scholar, Greek scholar. Dr. Michael Brown, who's a Hebrew scholar. Others who agree. But I'm going to move on. Uh, thou shalt honor thy father and mother. E uh, Ephesians 6, 1. Obey your parents in the law, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. The first commandment with promise. What is the promise? That it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. But he didn't stop there. And fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition, admonition of the Lord. You say, I did. And they still rebel. That's God's problem. You do what he tells you to do and let him handle the rest. Kids today are out of control because of our school system allowing them to do anything. And soon as you say something against them, the church wants to court want to step in, the ACL you want to step in and have something to say about it. But the scriptures hasn't changed. They are to honor you always. Without without question. Honor your mother and father. You say, I disagree with them. What is saying you disagree with? Trying to show you how to live and behave? So some things are cut and dry. Now, the next one. Thou shalt not murder. Jesus always taking a little step further. Who shall but hate his brother? That's First John, not Saint John. First John, three fifteen. Who shall ever hate his brother is a murderer. Watch this, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You're not can't get away from that. Next one, thou shalt not commit, commit adultery. You say, well, that's just sleeping with another man's wife. Uh, uh, while you're married, you're sleeping with somebody else. When I say sleeping, you know what I'm talking about. But Jesus takes it a little step further. Uh, that's uh, Matthew 
527. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. This is the Lord speaking. But I, but I say to you, who shall ever look at a woman to lust at her has already committed adultery with her in, in his heart. In his heart. That is done and you, you have already done it. Well, now the word look implies a gazing. You are gazing at her and you take it a step further in your mind. Just not look at, just, you just have it done to act. Let's go to the next one. Cut and dry. Thou shalt not steal. Ephesians 4.28. Ephesians 4.28. Let him who steal, let, excuse me, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. I'm going to get into that later. Giving to someone, you always get a blessing. But that's not the point. The point is, Jesus is saying, stealing is forbidden. You don't take what somebody else has worked hard for. You work hard for your own and have your own. Stealing somebody else's property. You could even steal time. I've seen people clock in and go out and sleep in their car. That's stealing money from the company. But I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Thou shalt not give false witness against you. Your neighbor, thou neighbor, Ephesians 4.25. Therefore, putting away all lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Okay. Tell the truth. Be honest. Don't lie on someone. You would not prosper. You can't get away with it. Giving a false witness, telling a lie on someone. For what? False game to help you grow? No, you won't grow. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Thou shalt not cover <clears throat> thy neighbor's property. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For we, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, So we may boldly say, the Lord is my help. I will not fear what can man do to me. What you need. No one can take it from you. You, you get this, got to have what someone else's have. You look at your neighbor and your neighbor is not, don't have to be person next door to you could be anybody you come in contact with you look at them and you say oh I gotta have that why do they have it and I don't well maybe because they work hard to get it they didn't steal it probably so what he's saying what the word is saying 
You should not look at it. Look at it on someone else's and desire to have it just because they have it. That is coveting what someone else have. And to be honest about it, if you want to, okay. Say the Ten Commandments was abolished, okay? All right? Say we have no Ten Commandments. But the New Testament list is a lot larger, okay? Here, Galatians 5, 19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies, envies, drunkenness, murder, drunkenness, robberies, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, those who practice such things will not enter the kingdom of God. That's point blank. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 6, 9, excuse me. Do you not know that the unrighteous would not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not deceive. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homo. I'm reading the Bible. YouTube, Facebook, I'm reading the Bible. No idolaters, no adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor coveters, nor drunkards, 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 nor revelers, nor extorters will enter the kingdom of God. But he don't stop there. Remember, he's talking to Jewish Christians and Gentiles, Christians. And such were some of you. But you were washed. But you were sanctified. They confessed their sins to him and he cleaned them. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. Pretty much. Like I said, the list is longer. But the burden is still lighter. Because we have him to stand with us. He summed it all up in Mark 12, uh, 29. Jesus answered, first, let me go down and start at verse 28. Then one of the scribes came and having heard heard them reason together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it. It is. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is no, there's no other commandment greater than these. Loving God Loving your neighbor, you in the middle, God first. He will take care of you. Take care of your brother or your sister. Think about someone else first. Love them first. You love God beyond all measure first. Then you love someone else. 
Because God's going to take care of you. When you love God, he'll take care of you. And you take care of someone else. So basically, I was trying to I, I let him know, you can't get away from it. All of them are right here in the scriptures, and you can't get away. You're going to have to obey God and live for him. So, Father, I thank you for your greatness. I thank you for your scriptures. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are holy and pure and wonderful. I give you the honor and the glory for all you have done. And pray for your blessings for those who feel like they don't have to obey your, your word. Lord, I think it comes from a lot of teaching as of lately. Soft teaching. That people don't have to obey the scriptures. So, Father, I thank you that you revealed your word to us. And there are still strong ministers out there willing to to love us enough to tell us the truth. So I ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless those who take their time to tune in and listen. And I praise you for it. And I honor your great name and say all power and glory to your great name. For you are worthy, O Lord Jesus. I thank you for it. And I praise you. Amen. If you have any prayer requests, you can send it to call to serve 316 at gmail.com. Any prayer requests or comments, call to serve 316 at gmail.com. You can also join me on Facebook, William A. Watson, or Facebook page, William Watson, or my YouTube page, W. Watson123, or Call to Sir Podcast. Music was performed and written by Julius H. Nieder Section. So I want you to have a wonderful day. I'll be praying for you. God bless you.